Hello everyone, I am the Interstellar Mediator, Sol 13, Terra 3. This video is about extraterrestrial communication in personal and diplomatic space relations as stated in my latest book entitled First Contacts, published on October 7th, 2021. I am a Franco-American university professor I graduated in language and communication sciences and graphic arts. I am a humanist and a writer. I was born 73 years ago on July 14, 1948. Since I was very young and at age 16, I have committed myself to a spiritual quest to find the answer to the question, who am I? I became a hermit and a forest monk, and I traveled in many countries around the world. Europe, the USA, and India, but also in North Africa, Central and South America, or East Asia, in a tireless search for answers to my question and to discover the secrets of the universe and enlightenment. I was inspired and worked with famous Buddhist and Hindu philosophers and I have been sharing my work and research for over 50 years. For five years, from March, April 2016 to April 2021, I was in open and frontal contact with a range of various interstellar species. 29 extraterrestrials, 11 men and 18 women from eight different lineages in live audio and direct writing contact. Andromedans, Tegetan Pleiadians, Humites and Draconians and in holographic and telepathic immersion programs Telosian Agartians, Alpha Draconians, Diazli Antiplex Arcturians, and Irmas, with whom I had hundreds of personal conversations from their spaceships or Viera Andromeda, a gigantic artificial biosphere, a cosmonautic spaceport stationed behind the moon. I am here today to facilitate a neutral and benevolent process through which Earth and extraterrestrial parties 
understand each other and try to communicate. My help varies according to the contexts of application. It includes elements of pedagogy and relational quality that give rise to creativity and a new sense of self based on the principles of balance, autonomy, responsibility, listening, mutual respect and service to others. In the Earth's dual world, the dichotomy consists in dividing life into dependent and disjointed parts. Two choices, at least, are offered to your free will, which should not even exist since everything is one. Left and right, good and evil, material and spiritual, each side is an integral part of the same script. The free will you think you have is only that of making a choice between two enclosing solutions. By choosing one or the other, you inevitably and continually sink into what you're trying to free yourself from. But there is another perspective, tetravalent and still unknown, that humanity must develop, the one where we evolve neither for nor against in immutable universal dynamics. Put aside your expectations, your hopes and your fears. Do not try to convince yourself of how the first extraterrestrial contact will unfold, where and how or with what race. Since, according to Article 8 of the Prime Directive, that you can read page 100, the delegations that will be designated must have the closest physical appearance and resemblance to the race contacted, to the extent possible the dress protocol of the contactees must be respected and used. The delegation will therefore be composed of interstellar races that look like earthlings, as the Umites from Umo, the people from the Pleiades, M45, Syrians or Alphatians from Alpha, Century. 
In the meantime, prepare your written and oral presentation. Think about the most important and significant aspects of your life. Work in depth to introduce yourself in a simple, clear, honest and spiritual way. Practice meditation. Develop your intuition and your telepathy. Acquire the knowledge you lack by learning and training using this book. Nurture calm, serenity, a neutral attitude without being indifferent. A keen and curious attention to learning and discovering. Uplift your thoughts towards the elevation of the human condition so that encounters with our space neighbors may be fruitful and balanced. We are living in the last moments of a transitioning world and we are witnessing the birth of a new era of Earth's humanity. Become aware that we are at the dawn of an incredible event that will forever mark the history of our time, that of interstellarity. Everything is here, now, accessible, tangible, malleable. Don't make any more choices, just be. First, let's look at the structure of the book and how you can use it to organize your reading. You can start reading the different articles directly, of course, but you can also read the table of contents, which is detailed on seven pages at the beginning of the book or choose one of the 85 questions listed at the end of the book, which allows you to answer your most urgent questions. Here is a summary of the seven pages of the table of contents. Between the introduction and the conclusion page 341, there are five chapters. Chapter 1, Extraterrestrial Contacts and Communication. Chapter 2, Exopolitics and Exodiplomacy. Chapter 3, Extraterrestrial Categorization of Earthlings. Chapter 4, Reincarnation fills up with souls. And chapter 5, Polyptic of Reincarnation. A diptych is a painting with two panels or two parts. A triptych has three. And a polyptych is a painting having multiple panels. Therefore, multiple perspectives and angles of perception. So the polyptych of reincarnation 
presents it in multiple aspects. At the end of the book, page 346, there are a few pages about the author, page 351, the list of 85 questions asked by internet users, page 357, the table of illustrations that appear in the book, page 360, the media graphy lists all the sources and references, whether in the form of books, PDFs, films, videos, websites, or scientific articles. The five chapters group the 85 questions together, presented in 58 articles, so you can either find your way around using the table of contents, page 1, or go directly to the list of questions, page 351. Here are the 85 questions organized by chapter and article with the page number to the left. For example, the answer to question 1 Were gods and mystical monsters extraterrestrials? can be found in Chapter 1, Article 1, page 13. Two questions 27. Have extraterrestrials made contact with world governments? And 28. Why is there so much secrecy about their existence? The answers can be found in Chapter 2, Article 18, page 104. To Question 29. What treaties have been signed with Earth governments? You will find a non-exhaustive list of treaties in Article 19, page 106. I won't read the 85 questions now, but they are all here, and you can come back later to read them out after you've finished watching the video. From the list of 85 questions, we will now choose question 1. Were gods and mystical monsters extraterrestrials? The answer is in Chapter 1, Article 1, page 13. They have lived on Earth, or visited the planet since time immemorial. They left the remnants of their cultures, beliefs and ancient technologies. Considered by the proto-human indigenous populations as gods of supernatural worlds or the demons of terrifying hell. They are still today presented as such under the veils of myth, mystery and state secrets. But in their daily reality. Who are they, really? They do not build 
mental barriers separating them from earthlings, good from evil, but they may feel aversion. Andromedan children, for example, run away at the sight of an earthling. You might may be disappointed when members of their society are nominated for a mission on Earth. As one of them stated, I myself felt a certain disappointment when I learned of my connection to the Ina Yuyesa, which is a social microgroup subject to a superior, like a work team, intended for Oyaga, your planet. My Yi, my wife, confided to me her desire to intervene on my behalf with the Scientific Council of Humo to change this assignment and I had to persuade her not to consider this as a shame or humiliation, but as a necessary sacrifice. That said, it is undeniable many extraterrestrial lineages are of a kindness to make Pell the most loving and greatest spiritual masters. They do express empathy and love in profusion. It is true that they show a high ethic and deep spirituality they do embody wisdom and knowledge which they share without restraint. But they can also be cruelly indifferent, narcissistic, and become expert manipulators if you do not pay attention provocators of conflicts and thirsty for power. And they can be thieves as well. Expressed in this way, it may seem shocking to readers who only perceive them as beings of light. This is why it is important to stress that obliterating certain aspects of space life is denying tangible reality. It is to denigrate the peoples of the Earth as well as the non-earthly peoples the right to be as persons or as a race. It is to subtract from life the privilege of experience and its many aspects, those generally qualified by the majority as good or bad, and the multiple nuances between the two, or the one not dual and not divided of an immutable, vibrating reality. Persist in considering space life only as an ideal world or a terrifying hell and our space neighbors as superior beings or horrible creatures. It is to repress the maturity we need to develop 
balanced relationships with our space neighbors. During the hundreds of conversations I have had with them for five years, they have constantly expressed the wish to be recognized just as people living on other planets, simple individuals who eat, go to the toilet, breed, fight and kill each other. They no longer wish to be gods or demons in the eyes of earthlings and even less to serve as walkers to a limping humanity. Earth's humanity must become autonomous. To question two, are all extraterrestrial beings of light? What about the reptilians? The answer is in chapter 1, article 2, page 16. At the tone of the official first contacts, we must take into account the multiple aspects of the different races with which we will develop relations in the very long term. Because once this reality is revealed and the Earth and extraterrestrial relations have started, it will no longer be possible to reverse course. Humanity will enter a whole new phase of development. Let's start by broadening the cosmic reality and expand our ideas. Without, however, wishing to make a comparison, many interstellar races have mental structures, attitudes or behaviors similar to those of earthlings. But others are very different. First, some are non-emotional and so logical and rational that they can induce, without being aware of it, a chilling effect on their earthly interlocutors. Two, groups are so highly emotional that they appear to be psychothermic, psycholunatic, and have destabilizing reactions or behaviors. 3. Others are extremely loving, respectful, sensitive, and so timid that they prefer not to communicate with our species. 4. Some fear the earthlings and educate their children in this way. 5. Still others love power, fame and domination and will never cease to show you, in a loving way of course, how ignorant and primitive you are and how incompetent your sciences. 6. Others who belong to the great illustrious races do not hesitate to insult earthlings, lie to them and manipulate them to achieve their goals. 
seven. And finally, there are also chronic kleptomaniacs. Contradictory? Not for them, because on the one hand, the notion of ownership is foreign to them, and they do not consider kleptomania a reprehensible act. And on the other hand, they have the strong feeling that the races, especially the youngest and the earthlings, are indebted to them. So, when they need something, they take it. Whether some piece of equipment on a spaceship belonging to another race, a bag of the best Bronte pistachio they grab from a store in Sicily, or a technology they no longer have because Earth technologies are antiquities for them and it's easier to fly down <laughs> and borrow it on Earth. There are also individuals otherwise totally loving who do not hesitate to point a powerful plasma gun at another ship in their fleet, putting the lives of two 1,500 crew members in complete fear at risk because a commander does not want to submit to their orders. And then there is the great concurring and colonizing races that claim ownership of planet Earth and fight to keep it or against other races who are trying to conquer it. These are the races that shape Earth's society. They are beyond the Earth's pyramidal tip controlling information related to their presence. Or the human elites, the media, transnational corporations on Earth, political religious institutions, and financial systems. They stimulate wars, scarcity, fear, and insecurity, and encourage corruption, gender inequality, ethnic and religious hatred, terrorism, drug and human trafficking, and organized crime. But here too, within these groups, which are finally structured into castes or social classes, and whose society as a whole is reflected on Earth, they are individuals, and I have been around them, who are infinitely patient inspiring and deeply spiritual. The longer the relationship and the communication, the less the races as a whole appear to be just only loving or just only nasty. It is therefore absolutely imperative that you become aware that the interstellar races are no more and no less than the people who live on other planets and who are confronted as on Earth with their difficulties and sufferings their joys and their sorrows. Give them back that privilege, please.